Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Rebecca Robeson. We are going to do another video today on the series that I've been putting together called The 10 Most Common Mistakes I See People Make in Their Homes that may apply to you as well. Today's subject is lighting. They have six canned lights three in a row, three in a row, let's da, 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 da. that's the way everyone does it. And please don't tell your husband if you have one that it was my idea. Tell him you came up with it, okay? So I don't get in trouble. If you know anything about me, if you followed me for any length of time, you know that lighting is one of my favorite subjects because if you really knew what good lighting could do for you, you would know that you could use it to your advantage. And boy, can it make a difference. And if you need further explanation, just watch this. Alexa, turn on bedroom. We're gonna start with some really simple things. I call them maintenance. These are things that are probably going on perhaps in your home and you don't even realize it. What I'm talking about is light bulbs not being the same color. I know that sounds weird, but take a look in your ceiling. If you have canned lights in your ceiling, it is possible that you have replaced some. Over time, they go out, right? So you get whatever you've got and you stick it up in there. You need to take a look at that because some of those lights have a yellow Calvin. They go more yellow and warm and some go more cool and white. My suggestion is that you get them all the same color. This is Sherry's bathroom. Do you see her uh, bath lights here? This looks to me like a different color bulb. I may be wrong about this. This actually could be a different color shade. In a case like that, if you want your house to really look good, I'd say that is the perfect opportunity to get yourself a new light bar so that all of your shades and the light bulbs are the same color. I also, so Sherry, take that challenge, okay? Uh, fix that shade or light bulb or just get a new uh, bath bar. This is actually my son, Scott, and Rick's uh, condo. And as you see here, they have a chandelier over the island at their kitchen. Do you see here closely what this is? Look how dirty that chandelier is. Do you realize that simply cleaning the glass or the crystal on your light fixtures can make such a difference? This is phenomenal, the difference. Now look, so far that's done. This is the only one that's been cleaned. Do you see the difference? If you just take a look around your uh, apartment, your condo, your home, and you've got fixtures that have been on the ceiling for longer than a year, chances are that thing needs to be washed. Example of what I'm talking about, of having cool light fixtures installed in your home, but not having them cleaned on a regular basis. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh man, look at the difference with that there and then I'll turn the light on. And the last probably most important thing I would say about maintenance is get yourself dimmers. I cannot stress this point strong enough. Take a look at the recent project I finished in San Diego. They got the least expensive can lights they could, $15 a piece, and they put them everywhere. The problem was those cans are not dimmable. So if you are going to put new canned lights in your home, make sure you get the ones that are dimmable. We actually replaced all 14 cans and they were $25 a piece, but they're dimmable and we could adjust the color of the light as well. Huge difference, not a big difference in cost, but so well worth it. Let's take a look at Kelly's room. We talked about this in the paint episode. Kelly has a really rich forest green color on the top part of her walls. I think it's beautiful, but she runs the risk because she has no canned lights. Even if she has, I think there's a small lamp over here. 
Small lamps are not going to do it. What she needs is to have lights installed in the ceiling in the form of canned lights. Dimmable, of course. And what that's going to do is not only light up the room, but instead of feeling like you're in a dark cave, it's going to bring out the richness of the green in the color of the walls. Again, a mistake in the fact that he has no canned lights in the ceiling. This is an eight foot ceiling, I'm guessing. He has a lot of different art pieces, window treatments, random light fixtures, which is very common, which is in my opinion, a mistake. But Charles's room is a perfect candidate to add can lights in the ceiling. It would change the look of this room. There are some things that he would need to do as well, but just starting with the can lights would be a game changer for you, Charles. You guys remember in the art uh, episode, I showed us Nancy's room. Nancy's also a candidate for canned lights. In my opinion, I would put a, a canned lights over the window treatments. I always do that. She, depending on if she turns this around the way I want her to, this could be so gorgeous. Now, you do need to know if you're going to do canned lights and you have a fan in the center, you want those canned lights to be out far enough where the <laughs> Switching of the blade does not create sort of a you know migraine headache situation. But she could do so much to light up her fireplace, her walls, her art, and not to mention just the functionality of her room. So listen, Nancy, I think you should get on that too. But don't forget, I want you to move furniture around. I think it's gonna be fabulous. Oh, and don't forget about those two floor lamps I mentioned. Oh, symmetry all the way. I love it. Nancy, I wanna see those pictures. <music> But what about if you have ceiling lights or canned lights? I see this all the time. This is usually done by a builder, a contractor, a licensed electrician, and it's because they're not designers. They don't really, they're not lighting up anything in particular. They're just giving you all over ah, light in the room, which is functional, but it's really not moody and it doesn't create that sense of Wow. You can see here they have six canned lights, three in a row, three in a row. Let's da, 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 da. That's the way everyone does it. And if you ask an electrician to put them where you want them to, let's say you're a member of the design sessions and you've actually learned how to do a lighting plan. You go to your electrician, you tell him, I want this can here and this one here. And he's like, well, that's not going to look good. I'm not kidding you, that's exactly what it's gonna say. And you're gonna say, run Forrest, run. You are going to walk away from him because guess what, his job isn't to tell you what looks good, it's your job to tell him what you want, it's his job to do it. Now, this room is so perfectly lit, but probably when you saw the picture of this, you did not notice the canned lights in the ceiling. There you go, Mr. Contractor. They're thinking, oh, you wanna see these lined up down the center in the middle and that's what's gonna look good. He's not thinking about what it's lighting up. If you light up what you're supposed to light up properly, no one's ever gonna look up at the ceiling to see where the source came from. They're gonna be so enamored with what they're looking at because it's lit. So take a look here. This is gonna look like overkill to you, but it's not. All of these are on specific Lutron systems where you can set moods and scenes. This set of cans right back here, these are what we call wall washers and they actually create a cone effect that comes down like this and these all light up this beautiful wood paneling. These right here, these three here, they light up the seating area. So let's say you're having a baby shower or it's Christmas time or you wanna read a book and you need good lighting. That's what lights you up. But these two here, you know what these are? These are adjustable can lights, meaning this, these are spotlights right on this piece of art. That is what we're lighting up. Let's talk about floor lamps and table lamps and how uh, a big mistake I see when it comes to those is people have the wrong proportion or they have a mismatch of styles and shapes. And I don't think, you know, maybe it's just they're just used to it and they don't think about it. I, here's what I think. I think that people um, think of lighting from a functional standpoint more than an architectural or artsy standpoint. I have this amazing crystal Sputnik that's hanging above my bed. That is a piece of art and your lighting can be that if you understand it's not just to give you some light. 
let's take a look here at Juan's living room. I thought this was very interesting. There's a few things I'm gonna point out to Juan, but look at this. This is a beautiful crystal lamp. And then over here, we have like this oil rub bronze floor lamp. It's kind of almost reminiscent of the Tuscan days. So I'm gonna give you a suggestion. Move your sofa so that this part, this back piece is in the center of the wall. Move this piece of uh, this mirror and these filigree pieces, if you're gonna keep them, move them to the center of the wall. Get yourself two floor lamps. And what I'm gonna recommend, you don't have to buy this brand, but I really love the Restoration Hardware and it is more expensive. You can find things like this on any kind of website um, that, out there. Something that has the crystal base and the metal that goes in the center, do those as two floor lamps like this. Do you see it? Do you, can you visualize what I'm talking about? Sofa's moved over. This is moved over. Now it's dead center of your wall. Two floor lamps here. Oh, come on, one. That's gonna look good and you know it. You've got to know it. I wanna see pictures when it's done because I promise you, you're gonna love it. Not kidding. All right, Kathy sent me pictures, thank you Kathy, of her living room. And I thought this was such a good one to illustrate two random lamps. One is a floor, one is a table lamp, but such different styles. There's no cohesion, nor does it create any kind of symmetry. I don't know if you want symmetry, but I would certainly think you might. I would love to see you get two same kinds of tables. These look like they might be the same height, but get yourself a pair of lamps. Guys, never underestimate the power of a pair of lamps. Let's take a look at my sunroom. I have a pair of floor lamps. Look at my family room. From the credenza with the television out to the two large plants, window treatments on either side, and two floor lamps on either side of that. That is how you create a wow. What we have here is okay, but it could be better. Of course, I'd love to see you do some can lights in your ceiling, but just get a, a pair of lamps or if you don't use these two tables, get floor lamps and then put a piece of art or a couple of pieces of art above your sofa. This is Carol's living room and Carol has, again, two different lamps. The two of these together don't really, it's not working, okay? Carol, it's not working. Love the lamp, but this right here needs to go into your bedroom where you have the, you know, fancy quilted bedding, something like that, you know what I mean? Or a guest room or, yeah, it's beautiful. It's just a complete and total mix of styles and I don't see anything that's connecting them. So that is my advice to you, Carol. I hope that helps and thank you for letting me use photos of your home. Your home is beautiful. Um, you do need an area rug. Oh, look at the legs on that sofa. Is that fancy or what? Maybe that's where you got the idea that you could use a brass lamp, but you can't. Just keep that in mind. Okay. She's done a great job. A lot of really cool lighting and things going on. Look, she's got the can lights up here that are creating this really well lit thing here. I was looking for a picture that illustrated the point that I often see people having bedrooms with lamps on the side tables that are too small. That's a really impressive backdrop. I would like to have seen larger lamps here. That's just my opinion. These are beautiful lamps. I mean, they really are. But listen, girl, time to take the plastic off your shades. I didn't even have that as a mistake. I should have, because my girlfriend, Bonnie's mother, she always, she kept her plastic on her sofa too. Time to take the plastic off the shades. You know, it's like, there's something about that that just feels a little showroomy and not homey, okay? Something to keep in mind is if you're gonna have a pendant light like in the center of a room, make sure there's a piece of furniture under it. Otherwise, it looks very random, like what? Or when you do drop a light over a piece of furniture, drop it low, go way down. That's what will create drama. The fact that there's a piece of furniture under it means it's safe. So let me show you this bedroom. We didn't have a chandelier, but we had a fan here. And by the way, this is a really good example also of very small lamps. She got them tall, but it just never really went anywhere. But take a look at what it looked like after. Oh yeah.
Look at this, amazing light fixture. And look, there's an ottoman here and two chairs. No one can walk underneath of that. And the fact that these crystals were dripping down, my client was a little, like she was asking, is that gonna like be too low? And I'm like, well, no one's ever gonna be able to get underneath of it. And I'm telling you now, they love that light fixture there. A rice lantern can be a great way to add some drama to a room, some lighting. It's very, very affordable. But what I have a problem with is how high this is hung to the ceiling, which almost makes it look like she was trying to make it look. Marcella, are you trying to make this look like a semi-flush mount? If it is, it's in a strange place and it's a little too high, okay? So that would be something that I would say, I see that kind of thing a lot. And if uh, you don't believe me, Let's take a look at this. Look at this chandelier. Can you see that? That is a very high, you, it's kind of hard to make out because of this valance here was so busy with the color of the fabric, but that is very high to the ceiling, okay? The standard height that you should have a chandelier hanging over a table is between 30 and 36 at the max. It's like 33 is a really good height above a table, which would have landed it somewhere down here. So I fixed it and I put in this candle type fixture, but you can also see we did beams in the ceiling and we did can lights around to land on each one of the chairs. Another mistake I often see is people who have chandeliers over their dining room table. Maybe the height's right. This looks like it's probably about 35, 36 inches above the table. That's not the problem. What's the problem? Can anyone see the problem? I can tell you right now, this table is not centered in the room, much less under the center of that chandelier. I see it a lot. And let me tell you, it is a very simple fix. It requires a, an electrician. It will cost you, depending on where you live, probably between $100 and $200 to get that moved over and your ceiling patched and painted watch the episode on painting so that you don't mess that up. So what we did here was instead of having, well, I actually changed the orientation of the table, but I put in two pendant lights instead of a single in the center. But as you can see, it is lined up this way as well as this way. Isn't that an amazing before and after? This is for Catherine from Do It On A Dime. Even her window treatments, I mean, come on, just saying. Linda has a very lovely home. Look at these arched entryways. But you know what I noticed when I looked at this? I noticed that there are two chandeliers in the family room. This one is not even really under the table, which probably doesn't matter so much because it's up so high. But there's a second one here. Why is there a second chandelier that is centered over the half the back of these recliner chairs and mostly on the floor. Linda, you can write in and let me know if I'm correct on this. And by the way, thank you for letting us use your photos. I think Linda bought this house and these fixtures were already here. I think this either had a dining, big old dining table under it or it had a pool table. This looks to me out of place. If I just took this and covered it up or put a canned light right there, Look how nice it would look to have just the one light fixture over the sitting area, as opposed to this like one in the sitting area and the one that's sort of kind of almost in a, it's place of its own, but it's really not, it's still part of, it's still part of the sitting area, but it's really not as, I don't know. But I would say, Linda, if you uh, took care of that light fixture there, I think you'd be happy with the difference it makes. And honestly, closing up and capping off a, um, a fixture that was there, is such a simple thing to do. I think this is great. I think this might be a condo, but one of the things I noticed in here was how random this chandelier seemed. It is a vaulted ceiling, which gave her the height that she needed, but there is literally nothing underneath of this. And I feel like even the styles are so different, but this chandelier that's in the middle of the room, completely not connected to anything else because all of the furniture is against the walls. And there's this amazing chandelier in the center of the room with nothing to go underneath of it. That is what I would call a very common mistake.
One thing I did notice is right here, look at this light fixture. This is just random. It has nothing underneath of it, nor does it seem to have a purpose, but I bet that Carol never thought to change it because it was a light source. At least she had a light. Other than that, she has no other light in this room. See the ceiling? No can lights. She doesn't have any lamps. She needs light, but this seems like so awkwardly placed. And if you're gonna have a light like this, it needs to come where it's in this area, in the middle of their sitting area, and it needs to drop down with a coffee table or something underneath of it. I'm thinking this would have probably been a great place right here to have a dining table, and then this was over it. I don't know, but that is a mistake I see a lot of people make. They buy a house and the light fixture's already there and they don't think to change it out or make it better. I was really impressed with Christina. She has a really beautiful home. I love this piece of furniture. Do you guys see what she did? She's got a the appropriate size television with a much larger piece of furniture underneath of it. This is a really nice light fixture. It's beautiful. And look, she's got a table underneath of it. Great job, great, great job. The one bit of feedback I have for you is your sconce right here seems very high to me and it seems random. I don't know if there might be another one to the right. I don't have a picture of it so I can't see, but this being that close to the ceiling, I would love to have seen this dropped. I'd love to know what it relates to, if there's another one or if this is just literally to the left of your sofa on its own. Sconces at the wrong height are very, very common. <laughs> Love it. Uh, I love her window treatments. I even like being able to see the, the wood inside. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with these sconces. These are great. I think they are slightly high, but I have an idea for you, Lucia, that I think would make a really sizable difference in your room. Anyway, if you took these sconces here and you moved them out on this wall here, above these art pieces, you could keep them as high as they are, have them there. Do you know that it would act as an art light? as well as widen the overall feel of your room. Imagine that, you guys. Beautiful door, windows, window treatments, equal size, this is very, very symmetrical. If, this, if these pieces of art were here and these two sconces were above it, I think that would look incredible. And please don't tell your husband if you have one that it was my idea. Tell him you came up with it, okay? So I don't get in trouble. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at these sconces in the entryway of a home I did, gosh, probably 15 years ago. This is where the light source should have been, here-ish, but they, they picked out the fixtures after the J boxes were in. They were having the house built, they knew they wanted sconces there, so they said, yeah, just put it there. And so the contractor, electrician, saying, well, where do you want them? We need, we need spec sheets of your fixture that you picked out. Well, I haven't picked it out yet, just put it here. That's how that happens. That's how you get yourself in trouble, and it's a mistake. When I walked in and I saw those, I was like, okay, so this is where the thing, but the light source is way up here. It made these lights so high, like if I was standing here, I'd probably be like right here. They're like way above my head. I gave them a purpose and then did double sconces on either side at a much lower height that just looked beautiful. Doesn't that make a big difference? I think so. I wanted to point out, I actually really like, this is Marcella's home, and she's got these really cute woven sconces. I don't know where she got them, but I think they're very cute. When I look at this, I think, you know what, Marcella, what would improve the look of this is number one, get rid of a lot of the stuff on here for now. These need to be moved out. And it's super easy for you because you didn't have J boxes put in. These are just hung on a nail and the cord goes down. But if you move these out here and out here, you would fill in your wall more and this stuff would not be in the way of it. Right now I feel like it's, it's encroaching and it's very tight on your piece of art there. Whereas if they moved out like this, it would look 
a lot better. All right, so that's a very simple thing, and these are just very common mistakes I, I see people make with their lighting in their home. Just remember the things we started with. I pointed out lamps and chandeliers and pendants and sconces and things, but remember, simple things like changing your light bulbs to be all the same color, having dimmers put on your lights, and making sure that your light bulbs are the same. Even when I was at Scott's place, remember we washed that chandelier. You know what else I noticed? I looked up in the ceiling. They did too, because I was talking to them about it. And they're like, oh my gosh, those two cans are yellow and that one's really blue and that one's like in between. I'm like, I know, that's what happens. A light bulb goes out and one of you goes to the storage and gets a light bulb and you just screw it in and go, okay, done. <laughs> And you never even look up to see that it is a random color that doesn't match the others. That wraps it up for today's episode on lighting mistakes that I often see in people's homes. Here's the deal. I challenge you to take a look around your house. What is it that you've been living with that you've gotten used to? But now that you realize it could be better, you're ready to maybe take the challenge. Do something to make your home look better this week. Because you know what? We're about to light up your life, baby. I'll see you guys next Thursday at 2 o'clock Central. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, you know, all the stuff. But you know that I love you, right? You do know that, right? Okay. See you then.